Fingernails and toenails kind of weird me out if I think about them too much. I mean, they're these hard shell-like structures that are growing out of the ends of our fingers connected to otherwise soft, stretchy skin. Kind of weird, right? But their anatomy is super interesting. So in this video, you're gonna learn all the parts of the nail, the structure surrounding them, how nails grow, as well as questions like, why do I have these strange half circle-like white sections on the base of our thumbnails? What's up with those? And if you're learning this for an anatomy class, I'll have a blank diagram that you can use to practice, as well as other resources that can help you learn the integumentary system. So let's jump to the whiteboard and get started. So here we have a cross section of a finger. This is where the nail is gonna go. This is some skin that's gonna overlap the base of the fingernail. We've got a couple bones we're gonna draw. This is the distal phalanx. This is the distal end of the middle phalanx, basically the bones of the finger right here and here. And I'm gonna add this so we can see the border between the epidermis and the dermis. The epidermis, of course, is the outer layer of skin. Cells in the epidermis will be undergoing mitosis and creating new cells at the squiggly line right here, the basal layer. And as those cells go out, they're gonna die and become keratinized or, or waterproof, filled with these proteins called keratin. And this can be really relevant to the fingernail that we're about to talk about. Meanwhile, the dermis is gonna be filled with things like blood vessels and nerves and hairs will be embedded in there. In particular, we need to know that the blood vessels are in there and that's gonna tell us a little bit about why we have different kind of colors on our fingernail. Now let's talk about the fingernail itself. The fingernail itself is called the nail plate or the nail body and it's gonna be made of keratinized epithelial cells that have died off very similar to the outer layer of the epidermis, the stratum corneum, but the nail plate is gonna have a lot more layers than that stratum corneum. They're also gonna have kind of smaller cells and that's gonna cause this to be a lot stronger, a lot harder than kind of the outer layer of the skin is. So the nail plate is made of many layers of keratinized epithelial cells. Now just underneath or deep to the nail plate is the nail bed. And that's gonna be the actual epidermis layer that's sitting underneath the fingernail. That's what your nail is attached to. Now now we have three sections of skin that are gonna be surrounding the nail. We're gonna add in the first one, which is the eponychium. The eponychium is gonna be right above the base of the nail plate, right in here. And it's often used synonymously with the cuticle. In fact, if you look up a lot of diagrams, it'll say eponychium, parentheses, cuticle. But the more I looked into it, I realized that the eponychium and the cuticle are slightly different. The eponychium is gonna be living cells that are at the base of the fingernail, whereas the cuticle are gonna be dead cells that are very clear and they're kind of riding up the fingernail. So here's the eponychium and here is the cuticle. The eponychium is also called the proximal nail fold. So if you hear proximal nail fold or eponychium, they're referring to the same little section of skin right at the base of the nail plate. Next we have the hyponychium. Hypo means under, epa means above, so that helps me remember these. So like eponychium means above the nail, hyponychium means below the nail. And the hyponychium is gonna be the section of skin just under the distal edge of the fingernail where it's attached right there. It's also sometimes referred to as the quick of the nail. So if you ever heard the phrase cut to the quick, it's talking about the hyponychium. You can see your hyponychium by kind of pulling the skin back and looking underneath the front side of the fingernail. Finally, we have the perinychium. The perinychium is gonna be the skin on the sides of the nail. So I don't have it in the diagram, but you can see here that on either side of the fingernail, we have the perinychium. Now the eponychium and then the perinychium on either side are gonna make up what we call the nail folds or the nail wall. So the eponychium and perinychium surround the fingernail and they're called the nail folds. Up next, as part of the nail plate, we have something called the lunula. Now the lunula is gonna be the lighter part of the nail. You can really see it probably on your thumbnails. You might also be able to see it on your pointer finger, but at least on my fingernails, as I go towards the pinky, I can see it less and less where I can't even really see it on some of those last couple fingers. But it's most obvious on the thumb. And it's this lighter section that's shaped like a half circle or a half moon. That's where it gets the name right. Luna in Lunula is referring to the moon. So you think about the colors of the fingernail, they look kind of like this. You've got a lighter section right here. You've got kind of a pink section over this part of the nail. And then at the very end of the fingernail, you've got another lighter section as the free edge of the fingernail is kind of sticking off the end of the finger. But here's the thing. The fingernail itself doesn't really have any of that color in it. The fingernail itself is kind of translucent, but doesn't really have that pink color to it. That pink color is actually from the blood vessels in the epidermis beneath it. So when you're looking at your fingernail and you see it looks kind of pink, you're really looking at the blood vessels that are underneath the fingernail, giving it that pink color. And that's why the free edge of the fingernail sticking off the end of your finger looks white because it doesn't have any blood vessels underneath it to give it a pink color. So what about the lunula? Well, the 
Lunula does have blood vessels underneath it, but take a look at the diagram. There's a thickened section of epidermis right here. We'll see in a second that's called the nail matrix. And that thickened section of the epidermis is really gonna be too thick for the blood vessels to be visible through it. That's why you've got that lighter or kind of whitish section of the fingernail. It's because that thickened section of epidermis is blocking the blood vessels from showing through. So on my diagram, I'm gonna make that look like it kind of actually is back to its original kind of whitish color. And now let's talk about the nail root. The nail root is gonna be the most proximal end of the fingernail, and this is gonna be where new cells are kind of growing from and pushing themselves out this way. That thickened section right underneath the lunula right there is called the nail matrix. And so the nail root and the nail matrix are gonna be the sections of the epidermis that are producing new cells, these keratinized cells that die off, become really hardened, that are making up the nail plate. Those are all being formed in this section called the nail matrix and the nail root. And those are gonna form that part of the nail and they're gonna push the previously made nail plate cells forward or distally. And so your nails, when you think about your nails growing, you think about them as like growing off the end, but really there's not new cells being produced on the end. The new cells are being produced back here and they're pushing the old cells forward. So all the nail growth is happening back in here, pushing the cells forward. If you ever have kind of these like white spots on your fingernails, I don't really have any right now, but sometimes I get them. Those white spots on your fingernails, if you pay attention over the course of a few weeks, you'll see them move farther and farther out on the fingernail. And that's because there's new nail cells being produced that are pushing the whole nail forward. So this distal end of the nail plate is always gonna be older than this proximal side of the nail plate, which are always gonna be the newer or more newly made nail cells. One more structure I wanna talk about is the mantle. And the mantle is gonna be this section of skin that's overlapping the nail root and part of the nail matrix right here. So most of the nail matrix, you can't really see because it's got that mantle covering it. But if you wanna guess where the nail root is on your fingers, it's gonna be about halfway between the joint and the epinychium. So find the joint, find the epinychium, and about halfway down there, that's how far your nail extends kind of into your finger. I don't know why you need to know that, but just kind of cool to estimate like how far in your fingernail goes. All right, let's do a quick recap of all of this. We've got the nail plate right here. That's your actual fingernail. The nail bed is the epidermis layer that's underneath the nail plate that the nail plate is attached to. You've got kind of three sections that surround the nail. You've got the epinychium, not to be confused with the cuticle. The epinychium is gonna be living cells, and then the cuticle is gonna be dead cells that kind of extend out onto the nail past that. The cuticle is a thin, clear layer. We have the hyponychium, which is gonna be underneath the distal end of the nail. And then we have the perinychium on either side of the nail. The perinychium and the epinychium form what are called the nail folds that surround three sides of the nail. We have the mantle, which is overlapping kind of the base of the nail. We've got the nail root and the nail matrix, which are gonna be the parts where we're forming new cells that die off, become keratinized, and become new nail cells. They're gonna push the nail out in this direction as our nails are growing. All right, if you're trying to learn all these terms, here's a blank diagram. Pause the video, see if you can identify all of the different parts of the nail and the structure surrounding it, as well as what they all do. And here's all those terms back, so you can check and see how you did. And hey, if you're learning the integumentary system, check out my complete guide to the integumentary system, where I take you through all of the information you need to know, as well as ways to practice it so that you maximize your learning. Also check out my free survival guide, where I'd give you tips on how to learn a &P really well. Special thanks to my patrons on Patreon for supporting the channel. Those of you watching, I hope you learned a lot from this video, all about your fingernails. Check out this video about the integumentary system if you wanna learn more about that. And uh, hope to see you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.